daylight savings time to all of you who made it here on time. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you for uh, giving God that hour, right? It's a sacrifice of praise we're going to give this morning unlike any other. So we welcome you. We're excited here. We've only got two days left in the courtyard before the Lord moves us back in on March 28th on Palm Sunday. We hope you will be with us live for that. And so let's go ahead and just give God some honor, some glory, and thank him for the beautiful sun that's coming in right now. Holy One, we honor you, we bless you, and we exalt your son, Jesus Christ. We lift up the name of Jesus here in this courtyard and over all of the city. We exalt you, Jesus, for you are the Holy One. You are the only one who is Lord of all, Lord of lords and King of kings. And we come now and exalt you in our midst. We come to bring you our praise. We come to bring you our worship because you deserve all of all of our worship, all of the glory, all of the honor. So we ask, Lord, that you would receive it now as we bring it before you. And Holy Spirit, would you lead us? Would you lead us in playing? Would you lead us all in singing and dancing in a way that gives the Father pleasure? We thank you, Father, for your love, your preciousness. And we thank you, Jesus, for your salvation, for your presence, for your constant intercession on our behalf. We exalt you now in your perfect name. Amen. 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 All right. Let's glorify God. situation. We have learned that we can find you in every single situation because you are there and you're not dependent on our circumstances, God. You're dependent on your goodness and your goodness never changes. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
You're where I'll find my answer, Lord. You're where I'll find my answer. I look to you in faith. our prayer. You're where I'll find my answer. You're where I'll find my answer. I look to you in faith. to pray as those who actually have hope, not as those who have no hope. Our hope is in God. Our hope never moves. Our hope is always present and never changes. Even when we get knocked off our little places of faith, if we'll just stop and we'll turn, we'll turn back to him. He's always right there. Even this week, I hit a place where something happened that knocked me off my faith, and I'm like, oh, to kind of fret a bit and and then I just stopped and he went hello I'm like right I have nothing to be afraid of I never have anything to fear no matter what is happening he is here and he's going to work his glory in the midst of it he's going to reveal Jesus in the midst of it he's going to show us who we are in Christ in the midst of every crisis in the midst of every situation he is the answer. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. takes them down. Why would I question 
what you're doing now. of my life stories You are the author You know the start and end You've shown up every time And you will show up again I'm just looking for your glory So in this moment I can rest Because no matter what the test You were God before And you will be there So I pray Today, tomorrow, you promise 
Stand my weakness, you're passed into the heavens, and now you're standing with the Father. You're always interceding, you hold my every promise. This is my great confession. You are God, there is no other. You are my great high priest. You understand my weakness, you're passed into the heavens, and now you're standing with the Father. You're always in. You hold my every promise. This is my great confession. You are God. There is no other. You are God. There is no other. You are God. I praise you, Lord, from everlasting to everlasting.
this world tries to show me the most important thing to know is Good morning, Jubilee. Good morning. To take a moment and go greet somebody and tell them you're glad they're here in the house of the Lord, even though we're outside. <laughs> in the courtyard. And I thank you guys for being here with us online. We're so glad to have you. We're so excited about what God's doing this morning. I just know that, uh, that God is going to meet you in the place that you're at right now. He's going to come to whether you're on your sofa or whether you're watching us later on demand or whatever the situation, God's going to come right to where you're at in your situation and come and touch and move and heal, deliver, set free to everyone today. That's, the, that's what God's doing in Jesus' name. All right. I want a couple, couple of quick announcements and we'll do the offering. And that, I want to let everybody know that um, we just finished the School of Jubilee uh, Mel class on Melchizedek, and the class is all on demand. So if you didn't get a chance to watch it or you weren't a part and you want to go back, it's right on the front page of the, the church website. It's on, just hit the on demand button. You can go right to it in there. And then men, I want to remind every, every man, every man who's here in the house, or if you're online, do it. Don't, don't do it if you're driving. Raise your hand. Okay, good. So we all know who we are. If you didn't get a chance to be with us last week when we did our inheritance, and uh, we had that time, it is online. You can go right to the website. It's on demand right on the front page. And I want to remind everybody, because I don't know what your week was like, but I know what my week was like. Okay. So what we, what we told, what we stood before God and confessed our, our desire was that we would spend one hour a day, five days a week praying. Amen. Right, men? Yeah. Stay with me, guys. I know it's cold. If you move, you'll feel better. Like, this is California cold, so yeah. we have to, it's just an adapting, you know. Spoiled. We're spoiled. It'll, the sun will come out, you know. Okay, so one hour a day, five days a week, we bring our believing heart and our confessing mouth, and we engage with Holy Spirit. We take the truth of Scripture, and we turn and return back to Jesus. Okay, so five days a week, one hour a day, I bring my believing heart, my confessing mouth, I engage with Holy Spirit, I take the truth of Scripture. That's what I'm saying with my confessing mouth is the Scripture, okay? And then I turn or I return to Jesus and hear from him, okay? So, again, if, if that's all new or if you just need a refresher, go to the website and, and that. So, and then um, we all know the 28th is coming. We'll be back in the building. We spent... Uh, just a quick little update. We spent the day yesterday hanging the new video monitors. So if you're here in the, in the courtyard, i.e. the parking lot, but if you're here today and you get a chance after service, just peek your head into the sanctuary. You can see the new monitors and that. And Lord willing, everything will get wired up this week and we will uh, start testing and getting them all set up. So in that, and uh, Chris has a quick announcement for the ladies. run. Don't run. <laughs> okay. Ladies, I guess I should take my glasses off. Uh, we are doing another wonderful Bible study. We're doing the book of Genesis. Um, we have started it, but there's always, always room for more. It's a fantastic book, the beginning, and we get to learn all the wonderfulness that God had planned and is orchestrating for us through the ages and the intimacy of his love and how he continues to pour it out upon us. So it's Thursday nights, 6.30. We are on Zoom right now. 
But we will be live, hopefully, in the uh, back on the 28th. But we'll still be on Zoom if you have kids or whatever and you can't do it. So see me afterwards, and I'll get you hooked up. We'd love to have you. We do have fun. We get to really hear God's heart for us individually and corporately. So Thursday, 630, see me afterwards. Thanks. All right. So let's prepare to give. You know, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting time that we're in because we're, 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 as the declaration has been over us, that we're coming out of this in health and in wealth. And so in the midst of that, we have to, we, we take what we're hearing, right? We take what we're believing and then we have to say it. And sometimes with that, it takes a corresponding action. It takes doing what we know to do and that. So today as we give, we want to just remind our soul that God is the one, even as our, our worship this morning has said, is God is the answer in every situation. So, Father, today we're going to bring our tithes and our offerings to you, our great high priest. We just step on in behind the veil, and we come to you, and we deposit our giving. First we give our heart, and then we step on in, and we give our, our tithes and our offerings to you. So if you're here in the house, you can come up front and you can deposit them here. You can offer them here. And if you're online, you know how to do it. You've been doing it now for a while. And just go into the, the website, hit the green give button, and you can give that way. You can go through your Tithely app or your text to tithe. And, that, and we so appreciate all the faithful giving, all the faithful giving of the saints in the time. So we'll go ahead and receive the offering and that, and then we'll come back.
take a moment and thank the worship team and our media team and all those who got everything together. You know, thank you, Jesus. Well, I want to go ahead and share, and I want to preface this word with, you know, I believe it was the Apostle Paul who said, not that I've obtained, but I'm still pressing on. So, this, this word, I'm, I'm speaking it out today, but it's not a word that, I've, that, I'm, that I'm completed or I've fully obtained. It's something that I'm, I'm, I'm working out in it. And in the midst of it, God gave me, has given me the freedom to go ahead and share from this place for everybody else. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a lot of me and I. You can just substitute your name and you can say we if that, if that works. Okay, so, um, uh, you know, pastor's been declaring that we're coming out of this season in health and wealth. And he said that last year was a year of, of warfare and of rest, which is kind of, a, you know, a, an oxymoron. It's both and in that. But he's been saying that we're coming into a year of praise. So... I started just really looking at my praise and how I, and that, and, and, and let, me, let me preface it by this. What, what we just did was praise, but that's not my praise, right? This is, that's a, this is a corporate expression of praise, right? Each of us carries our praise. Each of us has our song or what. Or, or what we are saying to God, or what we're proclaiming into the to the atmosphere, right? To make change. So I started kind of looking at 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 my praise, and one of the things I I started finding is that is that I was letting the corporate expression of praise be my praise, and so that was a God started kind of convicting me. You know, I, I hear Diana say things like, it's our song, and it's our song. And I'd be like, wait a minute, is it my song? Is it my song? What's my song? And that. So that's, that's what I want to start with, is that, is that if, we're ch- if we're coming into a season of praise, you have to know what your praise is. What's your song? What are you saying? Right? Because it's, cause corporate praise is not individual praise. Okay, are we good with that? Okay, thanks, Wes. I appreciate that, Lynn. Deuteronomy 28.6 says that you're blessed coming in and you're blessed going out. So if we're coming into a season of praise, if we're coming into a, a new jubilee, into a new place, then we have to realize that we're, we're blessed right where we are and we're blessed where we're going. Okay, so we, the first thing for me is I started looking for the blessing of the Lord. I started looking for things to be blessed, not, not considering or not looking at just an outward expression. Okay, and so one of the places I, that we've heard pastors speak on and that, and so I started coming, I came back to Second Chronicles 20 in verse 17, and I'll go ahead and read it. And I'm sorry online, we're in the midst of our video uh, upgrades and that. You're not going to get the words today because we can't figure out how to get the words to you. So you're just like us in the parking lot today. Open up your own Bible, get to Second Chronicles, and you can read with me in verse 17. You will not need to fight in the battle. Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah, in Jerusalem, in Jubilee. And then I put my name there, and Brian. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go up against them, for the Lord is with you. So they are, I'm going to jump to verse uh, 20. So they arose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa, And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, 
and the inhabitants of Israel in Jubilee. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe the prophets and you shall uh, prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the armies and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Can we say that this morning? Because I think that's still true today. It's more true today probably than it was then. Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Let's let Camarillo know. Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Father, we praise you this morning for your mercies endure forever. I don't know. Since, since Pastor started saying this, I keep finding myself coming back to that phrase, to that part, and just again saying, God, you're so merciful. You're so merciful. And I just have to praise you. Now, when they began to sing and praise... The Lord set ambush against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come up against Judah in Jerusalem in Jubilee. And they were defeated. I want to say today that I believe that that God set that principle of praise being the first thing they did, that how they would enter into the new place or how they'd enter into a new season was he set praise in that place, and then he took care of the rest. He set the ambushes. Now, I know that God had said, told the children of Israel that they couldn't deal with Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. Right? They were the only ones that they couldn't deal with. And then, yet when the time came, God took care of all of it. He set ambushes and totally annihilated Every single one of them. And if you read on, the part that always gets me is that if you read on in that thing, is that Am and Moab and Mount Seir decided to go to battle and bring all their riches with them. Now I don't know about you, I, I take that as a as a as a remembrance. Is that if you're gonna go to battle today, don't bring all your riches with you. Because if you get utterly defeated, they're gonna take everything from you which I just find to be hilarious, that God set not only their enemies against them, but when he had destroyed them, he gave them all of their riches, all of their everything. So for me, that's that part like in Deuteronomy 28, that you're blessed coming in and you're blessed going out, that God's got a plan to bless you that's, that's far exceeds my expectation. I know I'm blessed, but I don't know how he's going to bring that blessing. He's going to bring it in a way that may come because of, of, of just the, the place that I'm at and the praise that I'm giving, that all of a sudden now there's, a, there's a, an ambush takes place and then the, the, the wealth and the income and the blessing and the prosperity are there in, at, at that time. Does that make sense? Because, again, I think that, again, I'll speak for me, I forget that God really is in control. I sometimes think I have to help him. And I don't know about that. I'm a a poor substitute for that. But Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, we all know it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. See, our praise... When we, set up, when we set our song to praise, when we set our mouth to praising him, right, and acknowledging him, making him big, right, then he, he starts to lead us. It's a place, it's a, it's a trust and a leading in that. So it's interesting that one of, we were working yesterday in the sanctuary, and one of the guys who came to help, his name is Larry, not Larry, but not Larry Bingman. So it's like scripture. It's Larry, not Bingman. Right? He, uh, he has on his phone, he sets during the day eight alarms 
randomly sets these alarms on his phone. And then his phone goes off and the message comes up and it says, pray or praise, you know, acknowledge me. And he just sets these things. And so yesterday we're up on the lift and we're lifting TVs and we're wiring with cables and all this stuff. And all of a sudden this, this alarm goes off. And it's not this nice little quiet, serene, nice little alarm. It sounds like that, that, that air raid siren, you know, or a nuclear bomb is going off somewhere. And, it's, and I'm like, what is that? And he goes, hold on. He turns it off. And he goes, he goes I, I got to stop and take a moment and praise. And I went, what? Not what, because I was like lifting the TV at the time, but I'm like, what a great idea. So I don't know. I'm going to set some alarms tomorrow. I'm going to set some alarms during my day because I don't know about you. I get enough spam on this thing. I get enough dumb phone calls from people I don't know. I get enough, enough emails and texts that come up and I go, who is that? I want to set some alarms on there. I want to set some things on my phone that show up during the day that will help me stop from what I'm doing to remember to acknowledge him in all my ways so that he can direct my path. So that's just a, you know, an extra. That wasn't even mine. That was, that was bonus yesterday in the midst of it. James 4.8 says, that if you draw near to God and he'll draw near to you, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. There's a principle that if you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. So if, if we'll take our time, and it's, it's whether it's that alarm or whether it's just your, your time first thing in the morning or whether it's, you know, in the midst of your day. If you'll draw near to God, he will draw near to you. He will. He always does. Now, see, the thing is, we know that he, he said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. So he's right here with us. The thing is, is that, is that as, at least for me, as I draw near, I've been finding that I find him right there. I find him right there in the midst of it. Right in the midst of my day, in the midst of the thing I'm doing, and I find him. And that, for me, is more valuable than, than, than anything. Because all of a sudden you're like, oh, yeah, you are here. And, and, that, and, then, and then he leads. See, what he does so well is he leads. At least for me, most of the time, I don't give him the opportunity I go off and lead and then expect that he'll follow. And I know he never left me, but that doesn't mean he's right there. That doesn't mean he's, he's, he might need me to return to where he's at. So draw, what I've been practicing and what I've been working on is to draw near to him and to make him big, right? knowing that if I draw near to make him big, he's going to draw near to me and be big, right? So I think, again, that's part of what we say. It's, that, it's what we're saying he's, he's responding to, right? So if we don't say, he doesn't have anything really to respond to. Right? And I think that's the principle that Larry and Melanie use in our nation's prayer. is They, they just say everything big. Big. They're speaking stuff over nations that the nations have no idea what they're, what they're in for. Because someone is just being big. Someone's got a big confession over it. And, it's, and there's big things that are going to happen because God goes, Oh, I got someone who's willing to, to step out and say something. You know, John 4, 23 and 24 says, The hour has come and, is not, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such worship, uh, will seek such to worship him. For God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So our praise, the place of praise, comes out of our, out of our spirit first, Right? It's, it's, it's got to come out of who we are, not, not our physical, 
So if, if it's out of a spirit, it's not flesh. It's not carnal. Okay. And yet I'm, I, and here's where I've been, I, I've been having this conversation with God. Well, so if it's spirit, then it's not flesh, but yet I need my flesh to praise him. Right. There's times in your day and in my day that for me to praise him, I need to engage my body. I need my hand to go up. I need my mouth to, to start speaking. Right. I might need to get like we said this morning, you might need to stand up. You might need to do something. So it is a spiritual thing, but you might need to engage your body. And that's just me. I'm, that's, and then I need to bring the truth. And what's the truth? Nobody? Come on, somebody. What's the truth? I'll give you an answer. Thank you, the word. Right? So you've got to come with your spirit. You've got to engage your body, but you've got to bring the truth. You've got to bring the truth of his word. For me, what I've been finding is that if I'll bring his word in my praise, right, he responds to me much faster than if I bring my complaint, if I bring what, I, what my situation is. And again, I think I've told, told you before, for over a year now, God has stuck me in 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18, right? And the gist of that, I'll give you the, the synopsis, is, is that, that this light affliction is but for a moment, but God's producing something. See, God has a plan to change every single one of us. But the problem is, is that we look at the natural, we look at the outward. God always looks at the, the unseen. And so for me, God's just been working on me to go, okay, I, I know that. I know you're seeing this circumstance, whether it's in your family or your finances or your job or your ministry or whatever. You're going to see it. God doesn't take away our natural eyes just because in what we see. He's, he's always letting us see it. He just wants to see what you're going to respond to. He doesn't want you to, he wants you to acknowledge it. You can see it, but he doesn't want, for me, he doesn't want me to get stuck in it. Because again, like I said at the beginning, he thinks he's in control. Right? And I think I said this before too. I said that, you know, pastor always uses the part where he says, one time God told him, only one of us can be strong. You know, so then God told me one day, he said, only one of us can be in control. You know, and so I had to go, okay, then I'm, I'm going to default to you, even though my default is me. I want to I want to change that part of it. So, you know, God wants us to, to not, God wants us to, to believe what he said more than the circumstances we're in. Okay, is that, I mean, is that, is that just me or is there anybody else that God's kind of, that's kind of something that, so 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 says, the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or his physical stature because I have refused him. The Lord does not see as a man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So praise, my praise, has to come from the heart. It can't, it can't be just an outward thing. It has to come from the inward. It has to have a place that it's, it's more than just my words. It's more from the, from the heart. So, and I think I said a couple of weeks ago that Proverbs says that the, to guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life, both at all, so you, there's a place that you have to hold and watch your heart and the things that are in it. Pro, uh, Proverbs 21 2 says, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. You know, I, I read that and I was like, That's true. I think everything I do is right. I think everything I say is right. I think everything I'm thinking is right. 
But God doesn't look at that. God doesn't, God doesn't, you know, God doesn't really care what I think. And maybe <laughs> that's a surprise to me. God doesn't need my, my understanding to have it right. What God wants is God wants, God wants me to trust in him. God wants me to put my, that place back on him because, because God's always looking at the heart. In every situation, God looks at the heart. And again, that's hard for at least me to understand because, see, I'm, I, I see the outward. I see the, 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 the temporary, the, the, the things that are, that are not eternal. And so he's, he's watching and training me to say, okay, what are you going to do? Are you going to look at the outward on this or are you going to look inside? Are you going to look to see the, 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 the heart of the person, the heart of the situation? Are you going to look at the eternal part of it, not the, not the moment? And that's probably, for me, that's been, that's a, that's a long-term uh, place of discovery and, and journey with him. But so, so God weighs the heart. In our worship or in our praise to him, God's always looking at our heart at what's, what's coming out of our heart at that time. You know, in Matthew 15, it says, Jesus was speaking and he makes the comment to the disciples. He said, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles the man, it's what comes out of the mouth that defiles, right? It's the things that we say are either going to bless or they're going to defile, right? They're going to have that, that place. So, in our, in, for me, in my coming to him to praise him with my song and drawing near, I have to watch, I have to guard my heart, I have to bring my heart, but I also have to watch what I say. I have to watch the, that, I'm, that I'm only, that I'm not, that I'm speaking from the heart, but not speaking from the, the natural, from the moment, you know. Because if we bring our praise and all we're bringing is what we see, then, then there's no faith in that. There's no faith in praising God for what we see, right? And, and it's, again, it's faith that pleases God. It's faith. And again, that's, that maybe that's very elementary, but, it's, but, I, but at points of time I go, wait a minute, God, you don't really care what the circumstance I'm in. You care what I'm saying about you and your word more than the circumstance I'm in. And, and that's why I think he, he, doesn't, he doesn't need me to be in control over it, right? Because he's not looking at the, the moment right now. He sees far in advance to what he's already doing and already done. Right? Are you still with me? You're not frozen yet? Okay. You know, it's California cold. We all have our jackets on. It's 60. No. <laughs> Sorry, that's my East Coast humor. It's cold. It's 60. It's just interesting. I, I'm sure Chris, Chris was in Texas when they had their freeze, right? And I don't know if anybody knows. I'm originally from the Northeast. Ken will, Ken will tell you. We're, we're a cold bunch, right? <laughs> That's why we moved to California. But there was a whole bunch of memes that went out and just kind of picked on Texas because it was cold in Texas and the people in Buffalo and things like that when their winters are in the minus numbers, right? And they would that and they were saying oh it's it's cold in texas <laughs> they probably wouldn't like us because it gets you know gets out of 60 and we get our jackets on and i got a, a jacket on this morning that has fur in it i'm sure my family back home would be wondering what's wrong with them they're putting their shorts on to come out today sorry bunny trail i'll bring it back Hebrews chapter 10. We all know this. We've been, well, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's been practicing Hebrews 10, 19. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, 
which he has consecrated us through the veil of his through the veil that is his flesh and having a great high priest over the house of God let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith and having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water let us hold fast the confession of our hope not wavering for he was promised is faithful and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as in, as in the manner of some, but let us exhort one another that, and so much more as we see the day approaching. And that day approaching is not the day we go back in the building, okay? Just for anybody who's marked that calendar on there. It says in verse 22 that we're to draw near with a true heart, with a true heart, having full assurance of faith. See, when we come with our praise to God, we've got to remember that he's, that, that he's faithful. That he's faithful. Right? And as we come with our praise, as I bring my praise to him, as I bring my words to him, then he's now washing and cleansing my conscience, my heart, and even establishing the my body in the midst of it. And then it says, let us hold fast our confession of hope. And so my confession of hope is the things that Jesus has said to me, right? Those words. So what I've been practicing is taking those words, right? Taking the things that he's spoken and giving them back to him in praise, so if he's, if, he's, if he's talking to me about, we'll use the one I just said, 2 Corinthians 4, 17, about this light affliction that's but for a moment, then I'll, I'll give it, when, when I'm in the midst of that and I'm going to go have a conversation with him, I start off with praise. I bring my praise to him. So I'll say, Father, though it feels like right now I'm in the midst of a light affliction, I know that you're, you've got it. You're in control. And I thank you, God, that you... You are, you are able in this situation to bring me out. And I'm not going to fear. I'm going to take my place. I'm going to take my eyes off of the natural circumstances. And I'm going to bring myself into the spirit. I'm going to take myself through the veil that's your flesh. And I'm going to go and I'm going to be with you. And I'm not going to get stuck on what I can't take care of. I'm gonna, not going to get stuck on what I can see. But I'm going to come in and press in to where you are. I'm going to choose today to draw near. I'm going to choose in this moment to come close to you and to make your name big. Because as I make your name big, you're going to draw near to me. And you're going to make yourself big in that circumstance. So I take, the, I take whatever he's talking to me about and I turn it into a praise, into a prayer, into a conversation, into, into saying it back to him because that, that, that builds that hope, right? It's a confession of hope. And he is the apostle and high priest of our confession, right? Am I still with you? I'm, I'm, I'm finishing up. I only have a few more left. Hebrews says, right, Hebrews 4, the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and the spirits and joint and marrow, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intentions of our heart. So if you don't know what to praise, if you don't know what to say, say his word, right? Say his word, because it's going gonna, it's gonna, to it's gonna take its place it's a powerful place and it's living and it then will start to divide the thoughts and intentions of your heart it'll divide your soul from your spirit you'll start to know you'll start to you'll start to even have that place where you know what god's doing for you at that moment because it's dividing those those places within you and showing you the truth at that moment okay so it's our, our praise is, is from that heart, from that pure heart, and it's with the things that we, it's with the word, it's with the, the, the confession that we have that we're, we're using at that, at that time, okay? 
It's still good. It's still here. Almost done. Jeremiah 17, verse 10 says, The Lord search the heart and test the mind, even to give every man according to his own ways, according to the fruit of his doing. So one of the things I've been doing is I've been saying, God, search my heart and test my mind so that you and I would know my ways. See, the, the, the conversation with God isn't just to, to, to talk to him. Prayer is not just, a, it, it is a conversation, but it's not a one-way conversation. The goal of all prayer, the goal of any time of praise is to hear back from, what, from him, right? Because, I mean, let's just look at any relationship. If one person does all the talking, it's, it's not a conversation, Right? It's a monologue. God's not into monologues, right? He wants he, he wants a, he wants a two way conversation. So what I've been practicing is in the midst of it, and I and I start off by just saying, God, try look at my heart. You know, in every situation, that's probably going to be my my alarm during the day is going to be have my alarm go off and just stop and say, God, test my heart right now. Look inside, see if there's anything in me right now that has caused it, or see if, see if my actions are pleasing to you at this point. Because, and, and the thing is, is God, God will, to test your heart, will confuse your, will, 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 won't always make sense to your mind the things that he's doing. Most of the time it won't. At least it doesn't for me. I don't know about you, but I know that God doesn't always do stuff, and I don't always go, man, that makes total sense, God. Why didn't I think of that? You know? So the, the ways of God are not always, you know, I think we said it, I said it a couple weeks ago, is that his thoughts are higher and his thoughts aren't, are, are greater, and his thoughts aren't my thoughts. Right? So, so I want God in the midst of my day, in the midst of my praise, to test my heart. And to try my mind and to see if there's anything that needs change. So that I'm so that I'm I'm not relying on on me to make the change. Right? All right. You know, it says in Hebrews three, therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. You know, he, he has given us his promise. He's given us his word so that we will then have that conversation with him. He is the high priest, apostle and high priest of our confession, not his confession, right? It's our confession, so our praise has to have some of that substance of what he's saying to you, right? Other words, again, and I, the, the, the thing that's kind of been, that he's been really coming back to me on is that, is that your confession and my confession, your praise and my praise won't be the same, right? Because, because God's, God's, God's working on you for his good pleasure and he's working on me for his good pleasure. And that doesn't mean, so that's why there's a, to me, there's a difference between a corporate praise or a corporate song or sound and an individual sound, right? So we'll end with this scripture. Hebrews 13, verse 15. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving praise to his name. But do not forget to do good and share with such a sacrifice as God is well pleased. See, 
my sacrifice of praise is when I the, well, when the fruit of my lips gives praise to his name. Right? And it says here, let us continually offer. Continually. So I'm I I'm continually trying to find ways to 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 offer the sacrifice of praise. And that's when I give praise to his name. That's me. And it's you. So that's why I was saying that you're you're gonna have a different song, a different praise to that that gives praise to his name that's different than mine. Right? I mean, does that make that's I mean I know it makes sense, but it's it's at least for me is taken just continually going back and saying, Okay, God, what are you doing? What are you doing with this? What are, what are, what am I saying to what you're doing? So you know, Romans 10, verse 10, says that if you have a, a believing a heart that believes, it'll lead you to righteousness, right? Let me go. I got it right here. I don't want to say it wrong. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I think it's... It's the same principle we're talking with the men is that having a believing heart and a confessing mouth, right? It's a believing heart and a confessing mouth will lead you to righteousness and into salvation. It's the, it's a both and. And I think for me, and again, this is what I'll say for me, you can fill in your own, your own place, is that I've believed, I've just not always put the words of my mouth to what I was believing, which meant I was only getting half of the benefit, right? I had a believing heart. I believe what God's saying, but I'm not, I'm not putting that, that confession. I'm not putting the part that leads to salvation out of my mouth, right? Because it's with a believing heart and a confessing mouth. It's a both end. A, a lot of people believe in God. Even the demons believe in God and believe in Jesus, they, but they're not confessing, right? So there's a lot of people out there that believe in God. They're just not saying it. They're not putting it out into the atmosphere to let their mouth say what their heart believes. So... My praise it's first comes from a place of drawing near, knowing that if I draw near to him, he'll draw near to me. If I make him big, he'll become big. Right? That's all praise is. It's just be, make, it's, it's your words on telling God who he is. But it's more than just his words. It's his words. Your words saying his word, telling him who he is. Right? Because we, at least for me, I don't want to. I don't want to be out saying what I think of God. I want to say what God thinks of God, right? Because my thinking of God isn't always a hundred percent correct. <laughs> it's been tempered and tested by my circumstances. So I want to be able to say in my praise what God says, who God says He is. I want to say it enough until I believe it. Because it's both a believing heart and a confessing mouth, but it's also a confessing mouth that helps your believing heart. Right? It goes back and forth. I know confession, I know confession had got a, you know, back in the the, the eighties and that it got a bad got a bad taste in our mouth because it was, you know, name it and claim it and blab it and grab it and you can have everything that you can say and nobody got anything and then we all blame God for it. And that's, but that's not how it works. We were saying what we wanted to say. We weren't saying what he was saying. So to have a believing heart and a confessing mouth is on his word. And it's not by our understanding, right? It's not by what we see. And it's not based on an outward expression. It's based on the heart, right? And it's using his words, not our words. But yet... Here's the cool thing. We can use his words, not our words, but the more we know his words, then we, we, we use our words with his words. 
and it becomes that that layer like a like the the harmony that that backs up the whoop pause i got it i'm now off camera and nobody knows what i'm doing <laughs> sorry phil right it's <laughs> It becomes that, that mixture. It becomes, it's you start to say his words, but then his words become your words. So then you get, the, you get to be, as Pastor always says, you get to, to be the tongue of the ready writer. You get to, you're not, you're not changing his word. They just become your words. And that becomes like the, the harmony of the song. It becomes that next layer that's put on top that balances it out. So my, cha my, my question for you today is, is what song are you singing to the Lord? Are you singing someone else's song? I spent a lot of time singing other people's songs, you know, and there's nothing wrong with singing other people's songs. But my challenge for you is if praise is going to bring, is going to bring, a victory in your life if God's going to set forth ambushes and take out the things that are that are hindering you in your life then he's gonna want your mouth to be saying his praise I know it just got colder I'll finish I'll give it to Larry Larry Melanie get ready I'm gonna give this to you I know we're early but it's cold it's California cold and we all feel it so what song are you singing what is the, what is, as that scripture says, what is the fruit of your lips that gives sacrifice to his name, right? And I challenge you, even as, even as Larry's alarms yesterday challenged me to, to now say, God, I want to acknowledge you in all my ways today. And I want to make sure that I don't, that I'm, I'm giving you an opportunity in the midst of my day not just in my prayer time, not just when I'm, when I'm thinking of you, but I want you to interrupt me in the midst of it so I can then interrupt and give back to you the fruit of my lips, the fruit of my lips, the sacrifice of praise that gives praise to your name. So I challenge you today. What is the song you're singing? You know, what I'd start with is where's your... Find, find the, scripture that God's, the scriptures that God's talking to you about and start talking them back to him. And then, then take them from talking. And, then, and again, praise is not just singing. It's, all, it's an attitude of the heart. It's your heart speaking out of your mouth is the praise of God. It's the song that you're singing. Because trust me, if you heard me sing, you wouldn't think it was, you know, it's not a pleasant song, but to God, it's that it's the sacrifice of praise. It's that it's the fruit of your lips, giving praise unto His name. So I challenge you, again, what is the song you're singing? What is your praise? If praise is going to enter in first to defeat your enemies, then then you need to know what your praise is, and you need to sing it. You need to be giving it back to Him, so that so that you're coming into the new place. And that's the goal. So Heavenly Father, we thank you. I thank you, God, that it's, 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 it's our joy to praise you. Father, I thank you that you would help us this week, whether we set alarms and we, we step into a place that helps us, Lord, or you would remind us. You would take us in the midst of our circumstances and our situations, in the midst of, our, of moments, and you would remind us that you're good and your mercy endures forever. And Father, and that then we would take our believing heart and our confessing mouth, and we would then turn it to praise to your name, the sacrifice of praise that gives praise to your name, the fruit of our lips. It's the words that we say it's the moments in which we open our mouth and we make you big and we draw near to you that is our praise. And so we make the choice today to step into praise all this next week, all tomorrow, to step into praise and to make your name big. 
Father. And we thank you for the nations. And again, I thank you for Larry and Melanie and their ability to make 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 big declarations and big confessions over the nations, Lord. So we agree with those confessions. We agree with that place of the of what you're doing, Father. You're in control. We're not. But we want to let you know we're praising you in the midst of our our lack of control in the midst of the things we're in. And we give you great praise today, Lord, in Jesus' name.